Hello everyone, and I uh, hope you're enjoying the Cot Soup City 2022 House Party event series. Uh, it's been a blast. Uh, we're enjoying it. Um, today we are representing the Detroit Institute of Gastronomy, the educational school division of Soil to Service. My name is Jeremy Abbey. And I'm John Piazza. Uh, we're excited to have you here today. Uh, we're going to take a little bit of an educational approach and uh, look through the lens of soups and broths and stocks and what does this all mean. I'm going to show you some really kind of some quick soup ideas using convenience products and give you some tools and tricks of the trade that we like to use in the industry in a professional setting that you can use at home as well. And one of the first things that is uh, maybe confusing to you, uh, it's confusing to many students, it's still confusing to me, and we'll talk a little bit why it's confusing to me, is what is the difference between a stock, a broth, a bone broth, a bullion, a base, a consomme, all these weird terms, and what makes them different. So, Chef, why don't you like try to clarify on me? Clarify. Well, let's keep that term and we'll reference that later. All of those things that Chef Abby said are on the shelf at your local store, and it does get a little bit confusing. So in the professional setting, let's just talk about the broth, the stock, and the consomme real quick. So uh, if you're thinking about the stock, what is a stock? Well, it's a flavored, it's flavored water, essentially what it is, right? And they're all essentially flavored water. But stock is vegetables and bones, and when it cooks, Usually, depending on the bones that you're using, it could be from two hours to eight hours, and you are creating a flavorful liquid with the animal bones and vegetables, typically mirepoix, so onions, carrots, and celery, and maybe a, a little spice pack of some peppercorns, uh, maybe a bay leaf, maybe some uh, parsley stems, and that's a stock. So moving into the broth world, kind of dividing yourself, think of all of that in the stock also is in your broth except it'll contain meat so there'll actually be some of that animal protein in that broth cooks for just about the same time it extracts the flavor but it should be because it has the animal meat in there just a little bit richer uh, maybe a little bit more flavor uh, so now you've got your stock the difference between stock and broth and now you get into consomme. So hold on a second. So a stock and a broth are the same, but a broth has meat in it? Essentially that's the same. So if I have like a chicken carcass left over, or let's say a Thanksgiving turkey or a holiday event, and I have a turkey that maybe I got most of the meat off, but I didn't get all of the meat off, and I want to make a soup out of that, I'm actually making a broth. Technically you're making a broth. Oh, yeah, I that makes sense? That makes it sense. It makes sense. Yeah. Yep, uh, and it really does. It, it changes the flavor. Um, most restaurants will make a stock because they are taking the meat, which is a valuable part of the carcass, and they're selling it. They're using it uh, as a, a revenue stream, and then they're left over with a clean bone, so they make that stock, which then becomes a flavorful liquid that they can use in a variety of different things, especially as a foundation for soup. Broth adds a little bit more flavor to it because it has meat scraps in it. So there's a French guy in our industry, I think his name was Escoffier, um, the, said to be the grandfather of classical cuisine, uh, really did a lot for our industry in European cooking, which then advanced into all of the regionalities that we have um, throughout the world. And you know, there's some studies that tie back all international cuisine and how it links to some of these foundational techniques and terms that Chef's been talking about. And Escoffier, who really, you know, we look up to him as, a, it's our go-to book, if you will, um, in the industry. And he says that without good stock, you cannot have good food. So that's kind of the, the value and importance of stock. And how Chef said we use stock in a lot of different things. It's really that we we do. <laughs> we, absolutely, because when you, when you talk about building food that people want to eat, you want to build flavor. So even just very simply, if you're going to cook your rice, if you cook your rice with water, it'll be a very plain tasting rice. If you cook it with a stock, 
or a broth, you're enhancing it, building that flavor and making levels of flavor. And that's kind of what you want to look for as you're putting any, especially soups together, because they're just a good combination of a lot of ingredients and you want to build that flavor. So we always start with flavorful liquid. Water that's already got flavor in it. So we didn't talk about consomme though. So I was gonna say stock broth and then this consomme. And, and, and then we come back to clarify. You yeah. mentioned it earlier, clarify. So what happens is you take your stock and you put it in a pot and you mix in a mixture of ground meat and vegetables and egg whites and you put that, mix it really good into that cold stock. Stock has to be cold, everything has to be cold mix it in, mix it in, swirl it around, stir it, stir it, stir it, till it's really combined and everything is dispersed. And then you put it on the stove and you slowly bring it up to temperature. And what you're gonna see happening is you're gonna see all of that protein that's in there, that meat that's ground up, the egg white, which is the protein, and the vegetables, which will enhance the flavor, because you always wanna build more flavor. And what happens, you'll see it start rising to the top. And so, you're gonna look at this thing and it's gonna be all of this bumpiness on top, vegetables sticking out of it, and you're gonna like, what happened? What's going on here? And you're gonna see this slight simmer, because you don't wanna boil it, just slightly simmer. And what you're making is a consomme. Essentially, you're clarifying, you're taking out all the impurities that a stock and a broth have, and making that liquid, not taking any away flavor, but you're taking away all the little bits and particles and making it very clear. So an intense, clear, just like a, uh, I, I heard a story actually from a culinary school that what they would do to the students is they would have them put their consomme in, and they drop a penny in the bottom of the, the consomme. And if you could read the date on the penny, then you were able to pass that consomme uh, course. Crystal clear. Crystal clear. And that's what happens. But it starts with what we call the raft, the clarification. You want it, right? Yeah. And if they can't read that date, 1938, that was uh, that date was... on my penny when it was dropped into the consomme. And, uh, you know, and so it really is is that crystal clear, love that, that really rich, meaty, umami flavor. And uh, it's an elevated skill set that you don't see too often in a professional industry anymore. Let's say, wait, wait, umami. Umami. That was a term that is not always used, but is very important. So what does that mean, umami? So umami is basically the full mouth feel. And we'll talk a little bit about building flavor um, as we progress through. And umami is that essence of a consomme or a stock that gives you that, that lip smacking goodness. And with that, it basically that flavor profile that doesn't fit into the others. And they coined it umami sweet, sour, bitter, salty, umami. Right. So if it doesn't fit into sweet, sour, salty, bitter, then it must be umami. And it's that, that you can't describe it. And we'll talk about how to get a little bit more. They, you know, we couldn't describe it until we had the word umami. And we'll talk about building that flavor in a minute. One of the cool things, just to wrap up our talk about consomme, is it's a really cool um, recipe procedure that really brings science into cooking. And I recommend to all the families out there that maybe have a young one, you know, YouTube or find a recipe for a consomme and gather up the ingredients and take your kids through what happens through the application of heat and coagulation and proteins and clarification. And because it is really kind of cool, you build the raft that comes up and then you get to poke a hole in the raft and then you, you know, it's a long process, but it's really kind of fun to really see how science works in a kitchen and how we use it to our benefit to really build flavor and present a really nice product. And you know, if your consomme doesn't turn out crystal clear, that's okay, you can still eat it. It's not the end of the world. Right, absolutely. And if you've been to a restaurant that serves consomme, uh, maybe take a look at it, try it. And what you'll see when you get it, you should see a very, very light liquid, crystal clear, still has a little color, it still looks a little bit like your stock, but yet you can see all your garnishes floating in it. It's a really cool presentation uh, and something definitely worth trying, filled with flavor. Awesome. So with stock and broth and all this other fun stuff, we wanted to talk today about some of these convenience products. So I think I grabbed every single one that's on the market in the chicken family, except for the low sodiums and fat freeze and all that other you know, nuanced products. 
but it's become so available now that you know you get chicken cooking stock that exists out there so in reality this is exactly what it is it's bones vegetables and then they add some other things in it like some preservatives sometimes or some flavor enhancers but really good to have on hand um, in a kit in a house i can tell you that it's very confusing on the shelf if you've ever taken a look at this because they interchange words that this is a stock broth it's a bone broth that's with bullion it's bullion it's not bullion it's better than bullion and all of a sudden you look at the, and it's like wait a minute they're just trying to hit as many key words they possibly can so you want to grab their product that's the marketers uh, who don't yeah. truly truly understand the product that's in the container uh, to make it confusing yeah. and so, so like broth if we grab our chicken broth we can assume that this might have a little bit more flavor in it you know it's supposed to have a little bit more of that mouth feel so if we're looking for that we can grab that and then like chef just said bone broth it's like when we start seeing this and then i read the ingredients it's chicken stock is number one it's like if chicken stock is number one then a it's not a bone broth because traditionally <laughs> bone broth is no vegetables it's just exactly that it's bone and meat to make a broth you know, so it's it's very confusing, but by putting the word bone bar off in front of it, they can charge you twice as much. You know, so it does go back to that marketing thing of, you know, read labels, read ingredients, see what's in there and what, what works best for you. The thing that really want to kind of bring your attention through this demo is having these on hand in a kitchen at home is really, really convenient. Because as we're talking here, we are actually going to cook something eventually. And we're going to show you how quickly it can be done in, if you have these convenience products. Um, many people are familiar with bullion and these cubes, which are probably not even open yet. Oh, they're not. Um, you know, bullion cubes are basically chicken or whatever the beef or vegetable stock that's cooked down. Goes back to that guy, Escoffier. He was one of the first to help invent and create chicken bullion and um, broth bullions. And so what they do is they concentrate that flavor down and cook it all of the evaporate, all the water gets evaporated out of it and you're left with a compressed powder. And that is chicken bullion or bullion cubes. And these have been around forever. I remember my mom using them when I was a kid. Um, and it just, you drop it into your water and it adds that flavor. Uh, it really started with the movement of preservation. Everything had to last years and years and years, uh, and these will last a yeah. long time. Oh yeah. And then uh, recently, the uh, retail we were just talking about when we were setting up for this demo was uh, the idea of base. So in the professional industry, we've been using stock bases for a very, very long time. And then this company came out and they made bases available to on the retail market. And bases are a great uh, quick use because they take less time to incorporate into your liquid than your traditional bullion. Very similar profile, flavor profiles, usually a little less salty. The thing with both of these is many times they, they hit that umami note. They hit that um, full mouth feel, that full flavor feel that we were just talking about by the addition of model sodium glutamate or MSG. Um, with MSG and talking about building flavors, there are some key ingredients to understand and know that we use in the industry that really build flavor without the addition of artificial MSG. And how do we do that? We use things like tomatoes. Tomatoes have a high concentration naturally of MSG. Mushrooms. Mushrooms, another one that has a high concentration of MSG. Beets, I know you love beets. I love beets. Um, have a high concentration of MSG. So anytime you can create soups or broths or incorporate those into a meal, it's gonna build a more rich experience for the for you as a diner. Even aged cheeses. Aged cheese is a big one. Everybody loves Parmesan cheese grated on pasta. You know, oh, you yeah. think about what a classical tomato sauce and a classical, so just spaghetti and tomato sauce with grated Parmesan cheese, you have just a world of umami. Yep, and then you can grate Parmesan cheese in your soup. Oh, beautiful. Delicious, beautiful thing. delicious. So let's switch sides real quick. Okay. So if you want to start building some flavor, maybe, Chef, and I can uh, do that. we can get some carrots and celery and onion going some for basic, some of our soups. Basic mirepoix. Yeah. Yeah, let me do that. Let's take that. You want that? Yeah, let you me want take that? these. Yeah, just take everything. No, I'll take it all. 
The other uh, really cool thing that we want to talk about are some quick cooking starches. And so maybe you come home late from work, the kids are trying to figure out their Zoom class homework and doing all that fun stuff and there's not a lot of time for dinner. So hopefully today you can take away some of the, the quick ideas that we have for dinner and maybe throw together a quick soup with some quick cooking starches. These are really good to have on hand because they cook in just about under 10 minutes in a boiling liquid. And so we have some quick cooking barley, um, some split yellow peas, or any type of lentil. Lentils are really, really good to have on hand because they cook quick. A lentil soup is really, really easy to make. Uh, you take some stock, maybe some lentils and some seasoning, put it together, let it cook until those lentils um, dissolve. So that's about 20 to 30 minutes and you can have a really nice lentil soup. Grab some frozen vegetables, throw them in there, and then you have dinner for the night. And then talking about pasta. I love talking about pasta. Go for it, let's switch. So, so I see, there you go, you got quick the change. knife. So, orzo, it's a pasta, it's a quick cooking starch. Uh, I mean, you could, you know, just like with any pasta, these are, you know, six to eight minutes in there to be cooked, uh, and you can add those in. Now, thinking about something we didn't have, couscous, even quicker. Tiny, 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 that's not a grain, that's a pasta. That tiny, light little couscous, uh, what you do is you, a uh, little salted water, you have it measured out based on the, the uh, ratio, put the couscous in, uh, simmering water, and basically bring it up to a boil and turn it off. That's how fast it is, minutes. The other thing uh, we can talk about is a chini de pepe. That is a very tiny little pasta, a little Italian, uh, almost looks like a little ball, but it's actually a, a little barrel if you look at it close enough. Uh, another very quick, easy way to add starch to a soup uh, and even use it to uh, thicken it up a little bit as you're cooking. Awesome. Oh, nice work, Chef. Teamwork. Nice work. So we just cut up some carrot, celery, and onion. What's that known as? Mirepoix. Right, so we're gonna start a soup for <laughs> us uh, as Chef is gonna cut maybe some more carrot, celery, and onions. Oh, sure. And then uh, some zucchini. And the first soup we're gonna make is gonna be really, really easy. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some crushed tomatoes and we're gonna add some crushed tomatoes because we're gonna make a tomato soup. Are you gonna add crushed tomatoes? Yep. Excellent. I like crushed tomatoes because they have a lot of flavor. They don't take um, a long time to cook. And uh, this really, really easy soup that we're gonna make, we're gonna use a little chicken stock, a can of tomatoes, and then if you could pass me some of that mirepoix, we'll throw this in there. So we're gonna take, you can take all of that if you'd like. Okay. So we're gonna throw in then some onions, some celery and some carrots and we have a nice tomato soup that's going to start. I really appreciate by the way that you wash these vegetables before. Absolutely it's TV we don't have time well for done. Well done. vegetables. So we put the uh, tomato soup on the back burner and we're just going to let that cook for a little bit and through that cooking process we're just building flavor. So with uh, that took us about three minutes with the amount of uh, cutting vegetables that we just did. So you can see, yes, we had a can that was already open, but really, really quick, easy to make tomato soup that now I get to control the sodium level in that soup. And it's not a can of soup, so it's a little, you know, just as much <clears throat> two different items. You know, I think that's a good pause for a second in what we're doing because there is the opportunity, you can see shells and shells of canned soups out there, uh, all portioned and ready to go, just some add water, some ready, just heat and eat. Uh, but a lot of times, in the way to get that soup to sit there on the shelf for so long, it has to be heated to a high temperature, so it's the kill step to kill bacteria, and they usually have a lot of salt in it. So flavors are always out of proportion, really, uh, as opposed to making a home soup and building your own flavors. So it was, the question was asked for me today is, can you live on soup? And you know, I really think you can live on soup, but you couldn't live on grocery store soup, uh, those canned soups, because the sodium, what it does to your inside, 
raising your blood pressure. It's just too much. So having this skill set, being able to put something together quick and easy at home is just healthier for you. Absolutely. And it also saves money in the long run, believe it or not. Because, you know, this was maybe $2. A can of tomatoes is 49 cents. And a can of uh, tomato soup, the amount of quantity that that could make, is going to be about four cans of tomato soup. So while Chef is cutting some uh, more carrot, celery, and onions, because we're going to make a quick chicken and barley soup uh, with some nice vegetables, I'm cutting up some zucchini. And this is, again, just a matter of what's around. You know, so maybe you have some carrot, celery, and onions that are left over on a veggie tray. You got some zucchini left over from a couple nights ago that just didn't make it out. You know, you didn't, you bought too much. Um, and before it goes into the garbage, you know, so now we have a bunch of different nice looking vegetables that we can start a chicken and vegetable with a little bit of quick cooking barley soup. One of the things we were talking about mirepoix, which is that carrot, celery, and onion combination, which is a really good foundation for flavor building in, in just about every soup that you have. Uh, look at the ratio. Typically, uh, I know we have the zucchini on there now, but that is about 25% carrot, 25% celery, and 50% onion. Typical. Put these right in. Sure thing, Chef. All right. And then we have some chicken that was left over from maybe last night's dinner. A nice little chicken thigh, a little chicken tenderloin left over. And we're just gonna cut that up real quick and then add it to the pot. Throw some stock on there, maybe. Pick one. Do you want stock? Yeah, let's you want go broth? Over. You want bone broth? Let's, let's do the broth. Dealer's, dealer's choice, as they say. We're gonna go broth. All right. I'm gonna cover it just slightly. Perfect. So now we have a chicken and vegetable soup started. And then we're going to turn that heat up. We're going to bring that to a boil. And then we're going to stir in some quick cooking barley that takes about two minutes. It is pearled. Pearled meaning that the, the uh, husk is removed and it's polished. Uh, the bran is removed and it's polished. So while it's not as healthy as taking the time, to cook a uh, non-pearled barley. <clears throat> this is the quick cooking version. So you get some of the nutrition, but it goes really fast. So the last piece of advice and the last little demo we're gonna do is all about ramen. So I think everybody has had a pack of 25 cent ramen at some point in their lives. And the thing that really is amazing about ramen is it's it's a good product. You know, the reason it's been around for as long as it has been is it's, it's a good product. So maybe you don't want just the ramen noodles and the wonderful little spice pack that's in here. Let me find this little spice pack that is essentially this in a pack, right? So what you can do is don't be afraid of ramen. So it's one cup of water per pack of ramen. And what I like to do is I'll bring that to a boil with the little spice pack. And the thing that we want to do, because that spice pack has a bunch of umami in it and that chicken flavor. Right? MSG. MSG. And then we like to spice it up. So maybe a little bit of ginger goes in there. Maybe a couple, I have one clove of local garlic. Oh, this is from our friend over at Northern Jewel Provisions, Scott Welser's Farm. Beautiful garlic. Very good garlic. Oh, that's awesome garlic. And so then we get a nice, just one clove of garlic. We put that in there. Thank you, Chef. And then maybe we want a couple slices of mushroom. So we'll slice up some mushrooms. We'll pop these little stems off. And then I'm going to throw in a little scallion too, right at the end once I put my uh, noodles in there. And so all we're doing is we're adding flavor. We're taking that 25 cent pack of ramen and building flavor to make it just a little bit different. A little bit more exciting so it's not just chicken broth and noodles. And by doing this, we're like really stretching our food buck because maybe you had two mushrooms left over. 
Maybe you had a little bit of garlic left over. Maybe you had one scallion left over and you want that quick lunch. And so through having our items um, cut up and really, really quick, we can then put together just an enhanced pack of ramen. I like a little spice, so I'm gonna throw just a few crushed red peppers in there. Um, maybe you have some yellow miso on hand. You could whip in a little miso powder or miso paste in there. That's gonna be a really nice little addition as well. And so then you can really just kind of have fun with ramen and a 25 cent pack of noodles. All right, that looks you wanna put this in right now or you wanna put this in after? You know, this is a, a Talking about building flavors, you know, green onions have two different flavor profiles. If we cook them, it takes on more of that oniony flavor right. and really kind of gets a, a different element of flavor. Where if we serve them raw, it's got more of that sweetness, that um, pungent kind of flavor. Throw some in, why not? How about we do 50 50? We'll put some on the top and then uh, put some in for cooking. That sounds great. So just like that, we have three soups going with our convenience products. And so by having these around, you really can make things really, really quick. That smells great. So our chicken and vegetable soup, our tomato soup. So our chicken and vegetable is boiling. So we're gonna add a little bit of the barley to it. Looks like you got boil over there. The tomato soup is now boiled over. Give that a quick wipe really quick. We'll turn down that heat a little bit. So once the, uh, the vegetables that we put in that tomato soup were cut really, really small. And so with that, what we can do is, you know, it's a quick cook and we can puree that really quick. They were cut small and very consistent in size so that they cook at the same time and they'll cook fast. The smaller the vegetable cut, the faster it will cook. And so being at, able to puree it all together to get that smooth and creamy uh, type of tomato soup that we all love. Awesome. Those out of the way. Perfect. Do you want to puree that? Yeah, let me do that. Awesome. That way I can throw in our ramen noodles and go right in there. I think those are about a three minute cook, <laughs> whatever the package tells you. And uh, as chef is pureeing the tomato soup, you know, it's a really good idea if you like soups, and it's a, you know, I think it's just an essential home kitchen tool or a professional kitchen tool, is to have a hand blender or a fur mixer on hand. Um, they're really, really convenient for making soups and sauces and other little additions here and there in your kitchen. So we're gonna, the tomato soup is just about done. Yeah, Clear off the table. Here. We've also made our tomato foam. Awesome. So I'm going to get some of these plates out of the way. And we can start serving up our quick soups. Yep. Absolutely. I'm just going to let that foam settle just a little bit. really really important to always taste your food before you serve it um, you know most people at home have salt and pepper right there on the table um, in the industry the idea is that it's seasoned perfectly so the guest doesn't have to season anything and so chef is adding a little bit Just of a little salt bit of salt and uh, you know like we mentioned about umami that's great and so it should have a really really nice full rich flavor to it Perfect on a nice uh, winter day such as this. Everybody loves grilled cheese and tomato soup. And again, you can see how quick it was to make a tomato soup opposed to using one right in a can. And then our 
our barley is chicken, barley, and vegetable soup is just about done. Um, so if we give that a quick taste as well, we'll see that it's it's good. You know, we use stock. Um, the chicken was already cooked, so it was a little bit seasoned ahead of time. And then, oop, I did the wrong bowl. Oh, well. We'll go into uh, ramen okay. and the tall one. Ramen yeah. will be in the tall one. So and so now we have a nice, just really quick broth-based soup of uh, chicken and barley. And then the uh, chef has got the, uh, ooh, perfect. Nice little heat in there, a little bit of ginger. Let me get a uh, tom, actually. So this one. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. There we go. You see those scallions clung to the noodles a little bit and uh, just a really simple enhancement to a pack of ramen that really does just make it a little bit more of an exciting opportunity to eat um, kind of a low budget meal. Uh, I always like to cook an egg and uh, crack an egg in there or um, if you soft poach an egg is really nice on there too because then you get that rich nice uh, yolk in there. Yeah, nice. So just like that, we have three soups using convenience products, and uh, hopefully we kind of help clarify the stock broth, consomme, bone broth, bullion, base, which one's which. Everybody's got their own preference. Uh, the big takeaway from this is you should have some on, on hand at home because they do make that last minute meal a little bit easier and then uh, really can enhance and build flavors while you're at home. Absolutely, so thank you from the Detroit Institute of Gastronomy, uh, two year or one year apprenticeship program. Thank you for allowing us to be in your home and present this to you, uh, much appreciated. When the world is uncertain, having a focus can make everything clear. At Gallagher, our focus is community. It's a simple word that can mean many things. The places where we live and work, the industries where we do business, and the new connections we form around new ways of interacting. As your community insurance broker and consultant, Gallagher's purpose is to help you move forward with confidence by managing your risk, by helping you foster a healthy, thriving workforce, by holding ourselves to the highest standards of ethics, and by bringing together global reach and local expertise to help your business, your community, through every challenge you face. So whether your doors never closed or you're looking to return and rebuild, our focus remains where it's always been, on you and your community. Because that's what it means to build confidence together.